Okay, welcome to surface area. Surface area, it's actually pretty simple to, or it's pretty similar to finding the length of a curve as far as like the formula and everything goes. But let's just, uh, just in case you missed class or something or just didn't feel like going, um, here's what it is. Basically, you know, you take the curve, f of x, could be f of y too, but whatever, and we're just going to revolve it around the x-axis just like, you know, uh, in, in the solid of revolution. Um, and then, you know, we start to get this, uh, you know, sort of three-dimensional object that we can take the volume of and uh, we can also find the surface area of this item as well. Um, so, as you know, you can see here, I've kind of just crudely sketched this thing out, at least half of it. If we kept on going, we might end up... Ah, oh, shit, I did it backwards. Oh well. But anyways, you know, just use your imagination. Um, but you know, now I've got like this, I don't know, kind of looks like a chiminea. And, you know, that that's pretty much, that's 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 the best way to, uh, you know, make a, a, a solid, okay? Um, here is the set of formulas. I would pause the video and just write them down if, if they're not in your book or you don't have a book. Um, so maybe you're fighting the system and you're not going to buy books. You know, you'll just check one out at the library like a smart person. Okay, um, but anyways, here you go. Here they are. Um, but it's basically the same as, uh, you know, arc length, length of a curve, except you threw this um, f of x in here, you know, and the 2 pi in front of it. So, and depending on what axis you're revolving this thing around, you know, they kind of switch around. So... Um, I'm not really gonna talk about it anymore. Let's just do some examples, okay? Okay, so I have this function and here it is. It's just um, First of all, let's just sketch this thing out real quick um, Just so we know kind of what we're looking at. Okay, here's my crudely drawn coordinate axis um, Domain uh, looks like oh, it's gonna be a one-half and it's gonna be kind of a tall square root thing. It's gonna look something like that. So if we revolve this thing around the x-axis, it'll give us kind of a uh, a cone, kind of maybe you know, it, you know, something like that. So just 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 to show you what we're up against, okay? Oh, and we're going from one to two, so that'll be like one to two. I just just to make it easy. So really, we'll end up with a little band here. We'll end up with like a uh, you know, a ring of some sort. You know, we'll end up with something like that. Ooh, actually, it's something like that. Okay. All right, so there we go. All right, so the first thing we need, according to the formula, uh, we don't really need to do anything too crazy, except we need to find uh, dy dx squared. Um, that is not the second derivative. That's just the first derivative squared. So let's find that. What's the first derivative? That's uh, going to be... 3 times um, 1 over 2x plus 1 chain rule times 2. Oh, the 2's cancel out, so that gives me 3 plus 1. Now I want to square this whole guy, so what am I up against? I'm over 9 plus 1. Okay, so this thing right here. All right, this guy right here, I'm gonna end up plugging in. I'm gonna plug this in to this right here. Then I'm gonna take this f of x. I'm gonna plug it in the right here, and then we're gonna we're gonna use our algebra skills. Okay, so I always write s a, and that is equal to from one to two, and I get two pi f of x. So that's three. 2x plus 1, and then it's 1 plus 9 over 2x plus 1, and man, that marker is really bleeding through. I don't know if I really like that a whole lot, because it, it causes you guys to not be able to see it as well. Okay, so, alright, we got that. Let me go back to purple then. Okay, so we got that. So what are we going to do? I'm going to yank these constants out. I'm going to yank them out, and so is the pi. So it, it, we end up with 6 pi. Okay, and then we end up with x plus 1.
Okay, so right there, we have two radicals multiplied by each other. So that basically means I can, I can just take these two expressions right here, the 2x plus 1 and the 1 plus this, I can multiply them together under the same radical. So that's what I'm going to do right here. I'm just going to rewrite this thing under a really big radical. Let's just draw a real big radical. Okay, so all we're going to end up doing is distributing this. Okay, we're going to distribute this mess inside of here, and we should get an answer. Um, that is similar to 2x plus 1. Oh, look at that. When, okay, when this distributes, it's just going to cancel out, isn't it? So it's just plus 9 dx. You see that? Okay. Um, what are we going to do next? We're going to get rid of that piece of paper is what we're going to do. Alright, 6 pi, 2, 1, and this is going to be 2x plus 10 dx right there. So let's go up here and let's do a u substitution in the color of red. Okay, got that on the page actually, so that means du is going to be equal to 2 dx. Okay, by that logic we can deduce that dx is equal to du divided by 2. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go 6 pi. I'm going to rewrite the integral but without its limits. Okay, uh, and I'm going to go u to the 1 half because remember I took this Okay, and this is u now, so that's all I did, and I just rewrote it, and that's du over one half. Remember, dx is equal to du over one half. Okay, so I'm going to take this a little further, and I'm going to do that in a different color. I'm going to do that in the color of green. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna yank the one half out, and that's gonna give me three pi over u to the one half du. Ooh, got him running out of time. Okay, running out of time. So I get three pi um, two thirds u to the three halves. Okay. No problem. Uh, I am going to run out of time. You guys already know how to evaluate these things, so it's really not a big... I'm, I'm under no pressure here to deliver this. Okay, so here we go. All right, all I did is I just, I just, you know, I just simplified this a little more and I plugged U back into the equation right here. And so, and then now, now that I've got back in terms of X, I can do my limits of integration that were in turn. I can do the fundamental theorem. Okay, so let's just do a real quick fundamental theorem. And two, that's going to be fourteen to the three halves minus. 12 to the 3 halves, and that equals 2 pi, was it 14 square root of 14 minus 12, 12, racing against the clock here with my calculator, I type that in, that's approximately 70 units squared. Okay, I thought I was going to run out of time, but it turns out I have plenty of time left. Okay, so just walking through, you know, we just, the, the most, uh, this part isn't even, you guys know how to do this, fundamental theorem, and that's it. Okay, the part that is, is kind of weird, just like on length of a curve, is you're, you're ending up with these radicals here. Okay, so your algebra skills need to be really good if you want to take care of these things. Okay, um... So I just thought I'd do that video, uh, and unless uh, I get some requests or some nasty grams, um, you know, I, I probably won't do another one. So uh, I hope that helps, and thank you for watching.